Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Mac Break Studio. And uh, I'm here again with Mark Spencer. Hey, Mark. Hey, Alex. And uh, we are talking about linked objects or linking behaviors. Yeah, we're talking about a new behavior in motion that lets you control the animation of one layer from animation of another layer. I think we should call it the dominating behavior. The dominating behavior. I control you. <laughs> you go this way. So, so people who might use other uh, applications like After Effects, I'm familiar with some like expressions that does right. this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, this is kind of motion's answer to that. This is a way of doing that. A simple version. A simple version. Right. A simple version, but a powerful version nonetheless. So, so how, how do we start it? Great. So I have a little project just to show an example of how this can work, and I'll play it. I have this gear here, which we'll call gear one. Mm -hmm. That's the name of it over here, which is oscillating. You can see I've got a little oscillate right. parameter behavior applied to it to make it animate. Um, nothing else is moving. Right. What I want to have happen is I want this gear two to move, you know. With so it, and you want the teeth to yeah, work inside. I want inside the teeth to mesh and everything. And everything. Yeah, exactly. So I want the rotation of gear two to be determined by the rotation of gear one. Right. So what I'm going to do is select gear two, and I decide what parameter I want to animate because this right. new link behavior is a parameter behavior. Right. So I say, okay, I want to animate its rotation. So I'll go to the properties tab of the inspector. I'll go to rotation and right click right on the word rotation. Mm -hmm. And there in that pop-up menu is our list of parameter behaviors, right. uh, many of which we've seen in mm -hmm. motion three, but in motion four, we've got uh, a couple new ones, but this one in particular, link, is what we're after. Okay. So we'll choose it. And uh, right away, oh, something else happens that shouldn't, because that's a that's turning on, and it should it turned on my other link behavior. So ignore the man behind right, the right. curtain. Okay. So what happened is it applied this link behavior to the second gear, right. and it's not moving right now because if you look in the heads up display here, it says, well, what do you want me to use as the source? Okay. Right. I'll rotate, but you need to tell right. me what to drive it. So I want gear one to rotate it. So I'll just drag gear one into it, and immediately, gear two. But the, right now, they're just looking like two little graphics kind yeah. of moving along. They're not, they don't look like they're fitting together. It's mimicking it. It's doing right. the exact same thing. A little better to go over to the behaviors tab of the inspector at this point, mm -hmm. because what we want to do is adjust the scale. Okay. So the scale is one. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. Right. We actually want the inverse. So I'm just going to go in here and type minus one. Oh, look and at now, that. now, because they're the same size, right. it'll do exactly the same thing. Now, now they, what happens if it was half the size? You put minus, it go twice as fast, so you put minus two. Right, and you have to affect the teeth and... Yeah, if you have to have the right number of teeth for it to work out. Like it should have like the, I think it's half the number of teeth, it was half the size. Right. But you can also just kind of play around with that scale value to find the right works. value to, to get it to work, exactly. Okay. So, you know, very easy to set up and use, and of course you could, you know, play off this idea and have these gears drive a big chain of gears. Right. Um, but I don't want to leave the impression that all you can do is make uh, a, a parallel animation. In other words, rotation of one thing right. affect the rotation of something else. Right. So over here we have this flask, and inside I have a shape, and that that shape where it says liquid right here. Um, I have another link behavior applied to it affecting the scale. Right. But just the so you, scale. So you link the rotation to the scale. Yes, I link the rotation. In fact, if I select that link behavior just before we turn it on, you can see that the source object is the gear, the source parameter is its rotation, and we're applying it to the scale Y. Right. In other words, the, 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 the vertical scale. And I've also placed, you can see in the canvas, the anchor points at the base. Right. So the anchor point won't move. So if I turn on that behavior, um, and this is where the scale is really important. I mean, being able to scale the relationship because yes, because you're talking about two entirely different spaces, right? Yes, one's position, one's rotation. So how much does rotation affect scale? Right. And here, every time that little um, gear rotates, this flask seems to fill up because right. you can see the scale of that uh, shape changing, and Absolutely. you can adjust that in the scale little slider here. So if we were to bring that way down, it wouldn't scale up as much, or you could go way too full and right go much higher, but very easy to adjust there. And there's a bunch of other little things you can adjust to change how it how it works. Right. But the basic idea is you can tie the animation of a parameter to the animation of a different parameter on any other layer or, or group of layers. There's a lot of little things. And it just it lets you add a lot of scale to your animation without 
you know, having to do it all by hand. And also when you want to change it, because a lot of times the big problem is, is that if you don't have it linked, you get it all working, but then you have to go, okay, if I change this, then I have to change this, then I have boom, to change boom, this, boom. And, yeah. and instead now we can just do a little yeah. crank. Instead of this cascading reaction where you've got to fix everything, right. you change. So all we have to do, if I turn off the oscillation of that first gear here, let me just stop playback, but if I select the gear, you can just see, sorry, I select the first gear, um, anything I do, if I just drag on its rotation handle, you can see how the other pieces react to just manually dragging on that. Right. And that's the relationship that stays no matter how you animate that first gear. In 3D, I had a, uh, a landing gear that had to open. Uh -huh. And I connected all, all the little pieces of everything that had to work there with a little slider that I could just move up and down. So, you know, off screen, you know, off like it's right. not, well, it would be, it wouldn't, it just wasn't rendered. Okay. But I just grab onto this little block and if I move the block down, the whole thing went, <laughs> open you know, up. and open yeah. all up. And those are the kind of things that you can do as you well. Make, make it very complex, go into 3D, just set your anchor points in the right, right. place and, and have a ball. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. You bet. And uh, you've got a bunch of stuff that uh, is on Ripple Training? Ripple Training, yeah. Go into depth in Motion 4, learn all the pieces of it. There's a bunch of free uh, little movies up there, and there's some great uh, tutorials to go, go in depth and really learn how to use the application. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah, you bet. And thank you for watching Mac Break Studio.